Good afternoon. My name is Melanie Griffin, and I am coming to you from Tampa, Florida. So if you are out there in the West Coast, good morning. I am so happy to be a part of the No Tampa Tribe since 2018, so for the past two or so years. And it has just been a great way to connect with other women around the U.S. as well as Canada. So thank you today for joining me for How to Spread Your Sunshine. And the way we came up with this topic was because in addition to serving as an attorney here in Tampa, Tampa, I am also the founder of Spread Your Sunshine, a inspirational keynote speaking products and consulting company that especially focuses on helping small businesses, women and girls having the confidence that they need to succeed and to shine beyond the glass ceiling. So turning to today's topic of how do you spread your sunshine, I have a few thoughts that I want to leave you with in our 10 or so minutes together here on our Facebook Live. And so my first tip is this, is that spreading your sunshine 100% starts with mindset. And I want to warn you, this is a practice, not a perfection. There are certainly mornings that I get out of bed that it is really difficult to um, wrap my head around wanting to bring joy to others. And as my husband sometimes jokes with me, he says, as good as you are about spreading sunshine out in the community, you oftentimes fail to do it at home. So um, again, it's something that we're all working on every single day. But with that, uh, one of the things that has really helped me is to think of the world as my quote unquote community or customer. And so there's no one who is excluded that and excluded from that, including our fur babies, our dogs. I'm a huge animal lover. My best friend Molly is a six year old golden lab. And so I want everybody with whom I interact on a daily basis to hopefully come away having a positive experience when they interact with Melanie. One of the things that helps me achieve that goal is this, is that I intentionally take a breath and don't necessarily run from activity to activity, but maybe spend 30 or so seconds as I'm transitioning throughout my day to intentionally focus on who I'm going to be meeting with next and the experience that I want for them to have with me. So for instance, if I'm applying this to your life, when you are in your car and you pull into your parking spot and you are ready to walk into your home, into your classroom, into your office, think what kind of experience do I want my spouse, my friend, my pet, my students, whomever it may be, what type of experience are they going to have with me today? And just wrapping your mind around that mindset for me, one of the hardest times of the day is at the end of the day, around that five o'clock area, right? Um, you're starting to get tired, you put in a full day at work, and maybe for those of us who have um, pets or a home or a spouse or someone who's waiting for us, you are exhausted and it can be tough to then walk in and also bring the energy there to your loved ones who also deserve your time and attention. And so taking that quick breath in the car to think about what do I want them to have as an experience with me before you walk in the door can be really helpful. And so try that as you are going on with your day. Tip number two that will feed into this is giving yourself and others grace. And I include you in that because oftentimes we forget ourselves in this message. And you too are worthy of love and are worthy of being given grace. And so with that, one of the things that you're going to have to do is to learn how to forgive yourself. And I pause there because it is such an important message and yet one that so many of us struggle with, that when someone else does something in our life that they apologize for or they don't, oftentimes we are quick to say, oh, don't worry about it, you didn't mean that, or it was an accident. And yet if we do one thing, we will rake ourselves to the coals and continue to think about it over and over and over and dwell on that. And that isn't going to help you move past that at all. And so something that you want to think about when it comes to forgiving yourself is that there's a great quote by Maya Angelou that says, if I had known better, I would have done better. And now that I know better, I will do better moving forward. And so if something does not go the way that you planned or wanted, and that's gonna happen to all of us. It happens to me on a daily basis, on a multi-time daily basis, every single day. And so with that, what you want to do is to really focus on what is the specific thing or interaction that didn't go the way you wanted to, analyze how it could have gone differently and or what you could do differently in that scenario. 
Don't dwell on it, move forward, and the next time you encounter that same interaction, do it differently, do it how you planned, do it how you learned. Because again, continuing to look back and focus on where you've been, that isn't gonna help you move forward. But what will is learning from every experience and constantly continuing to grow. There's a statistic out there that a really small portion of America, less than 50%, actually continues to read after they graduate from high school, and that percentage goes down after students graduate from college. And so if you think about the fact that you are a life lifelong learner and all of us are lifelong learners, whether that's truly reading a book in its current um, form as a paperback or with all the new technology that we have in terms of podcasts, um, in terms of online, audible, etc., you can continue to learn and how to give yourself grace as well as others and extending that message and love to them. The third thing that you want to think about is uplifting others. And again, this was not necessarily um, innate for me. I have a strong Midwestern background. I was born and raised here in Florida, uh, but my family has a fourth generation farm up in Illinois. And so everybody up there is incredible. Um, they are so loving. They would give you the shirt off their back. What they may or may not do is actually give you a hug or tell you that they love you, right? They may be, um, they may have been practicing social distancing a little bit before it was called social distancing, is that you don't necessarily have people who um, are touchy-feely um, always in that part of the country, even though they are so warm and welcoming and want to help you. And so with that, it was really hard for me when I first started practicing how to spread my sunshine in terms of not just thinking someone was incredible, but actually telling them, actually articulating that message. But I can tell you that that makes a world of difference to those with whom you are interacting. And there's a couple of examples I wanna give you as to why to really um, make this message resonate with you at home. First of all is this. So I talked about the fact that Spread Your Sunshine in part makes inspirational products. And one of the things that we make are inspirational note cards. And I actually have um, an example um, right here. So this note card right here says, uh, with love and sunshine, your number one fan, keep shining brightly on the back, um, sister. And so with these note cards, I would oftentimes send them out to people that I thought had done awesome things in the world because Again, um, with Spread Your Sunshine having inspirational products, all of our messages are congratulatory, empowering, and or uplifting. While certainly there is a time and a place, and I oftentimes send thank you notes or um, sympathy cards or birthday cards, they aren't from the Spread Your Sunshine line. I get those from other card providers. So when I'm sending something from Spread Your Sunshine, it specifically is to tell you how amazing I think you are. And what was curious to me is this, is that over 50% of the time when I received a message back from someone who got a spread your sunshine message, what they said was, I was having a really tough day. I didn't think I was going to make it, or I just didn't believe in myself that day. And it always just made me pause because that wasn't why I sent it to the person. I sent it to them because I thought they were awesome. And here they are telling me that they were really struggling with that concept. And so here, let's give a specific example in the No Tribe community. Sarah Bankin, who is our founder, Thank you for bringing us all together. We would not be here but for you. And so I don't know about you, but I look at Sarah's messages in our closed group, or I guess in our open group. I know she's opened it up um, over the past few months to connect with more and more women um, across the world, which is just incredible. Um, and so while Sarah, to me, always looks polished and put together like she knows what she's doing, I also know from talking to her, and I'm sure many of you do too, that 2020, as it has been for um, many of us, for her, in some ways has been um, a struggle there have been things that she's had to work through. The summit that we should have all been at first in May, we couldn't go to Arizona because we couldn't travel. Um, it was rescheduled to July. Again, we can't be together in two weeks because the pandemic is ongoing. And so there are some tough hurdles that Sarah has had to um, overcome. And so as awesome as Sarah is on the outside to all of us, and she is getting those little messages of encouragement that actually tell her that she is making a difference in your life, that is what Sarah needs in terms of the energy to keep keep going. And that is the power that you have to impact all those around you is to give those little uplifting messages and say, you are incredible. You truly are changing the world. You made a difference and the time that you spent will actually positively impact my life.
And so to wrap this all up, I know we only have a short 10 minutes together and I'm so glad that I got to connect with you for a few minutes a day is this, is that at this point in time, spreading your sunshine is important now than it ever was because of everything that's going on in the world. There is so much stress that the members of our community have in terms of the coronavirus and worrying about um, the impacts of that. Are they gonna have a job tomorrow? Are they going to be able to continue their business? Do they have loved ones who are sick? Are they themselves sick? Do they have a pre-existing condition? Um, are you looking at giving birth and your loved ones can't be with you? Or have you lost a loved one during the pandemic and you aren't able to appropriate appropriately celebrate that life because we couldn't come together in the ways that we're used to coming together. Those are all very real things in addition to the continued systemic racism that is at the forefront of national conversation as well as other communities that are suffering that we are continuing to have to grapple with that are severely impacting how other people are feeling every day and how they are able to be present in your life. And so one of the things I'd like for you to think about is that if you receive a message or have an interaction that seems off to you or someone just doesn't seem like they're um, themselves or you get something and you're like, man, that's just not how I would have approached it. Think about extending grace to that person and not judging them for that interaction, but actually connecting with them, actually finding out what is going on in their life. And if at the end of the day, they are not worthy of your love and affection because they truly meant that message um, as you heard it the first time, then that's certainly something um, that needs to be dealt with differently. But more times than not, what we find out is that someone was actually just having a really bad day and they were unable to get into that mindset that we initially talked about and bring forward the best version of themselves. And that is what the power of human connection can do, is to actually bring us together, to open your world, and to actually understand what is going on with all those around you. And so I'd encourage that for you to do that for yourself as well as for the members of your community. So thank you for allowing me to connect with you for a few minutes today. I really enjoyed our time together, even though it's been brief. I would love to extend it. And one of the ways we can do so is to connect with Spread Your Sunshine on our website, which is spreadyoursunshine.com. There you will find at the top of our banner a 15% off discount code if you'd like to join our e-newsletter to get periodic updates. Or you can also read our blog there. In the upper right-hand corner, we have messages that come out several times per week with tips and tricks, again, for um, entrepreneurs, small businesses, and on diversity, mental health, and other empowering things for small business owners, employees, women, and girls. Lastly, you can connect with us on social media. We have four platforms. The first three are Instagram, Facebook, and LinkedIn. We are at Spread Your Sunshine at all three. And the last one are, is Twitter, our fourth one, and our hashtag there is at sunshine underscore women is our handle. And so again, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate our time together, and I hope you have an awesome rest of your Wednesday. Bye, friends.